and Jerry Leaner is joining us now by Skype. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Jane. It's I, to be here. Well, I, I can see that you're not on duty now, um, and we can talk without, uh, you know, hearing all that chatter at the firehouse that I'm sure you kind of miss. You work uh, 30 hours a week, two shifts of 15 hours, unpaid. What is the biggest payoff for you? Helping people when they need it the most. That's what you're giving, but what are you getting? What's the biggest thing you get out of doing this? It's touching your soul. It's just getting deep into your soul and feeling like you get a reward. As well, a volunteer, we don't get paid. Uh, do you, do, did you ever feel that during your career? You had a successful career. You were good at your work. You were respected at it. And, and, but did, these, did you ever talk about your soul when you no. were working in, in accounting? No. 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 What do you, what, Jerry, what do you hope that um, people who have seen your story on the Today Show or just now, what do you hope they take away from it? That it's never, never too late. It's never too late. Elizabeth Crook is the author of the upcoming book, Discover Your Yippee. And thanks for coming uh, to join us from Nashville. Thanks, Jane. I'm uh, delighted to be here. Dis yippee means discover. Yippee! What is it that makes you want to get up in the morning and say, yippee, I get to do this today? I'd love to have some of that. Actually, I got, probably got some of that going. <laughs> I think you do. Um, the the sub subtitle of the upcoming book is? Five Steps to Find Work You Love. To Find Work You Love. Your goal is not necessarily to help us find a job. It is some people are looking for a new job, but some people are looking for something more, something different. We just don't know what it is. Um, and how do, how, do you, how do you define that broad spectrum of what it is people are looking for? I think most of us have times in our life when we lose track of time, when we are so much in the flow, when we are doing what is our gift, that sometimes we just dismiss it. But when we can incorporate more of that into what we do, whether it's for money or whether it's not for money, then that gives us that sensation of saying, yippee! Elizabeth, I think, is the kind of person that you'd hope to sit next to on a, um, a plane and she would uh, uh, help you solve your, uh, your, the big questions of your life. Show us how you have mapped Jerry's process of moving from accountant to volunteer EMT. So the first thing Jerry did was he said, I want a change. He said, I don't want to miss my children's baseball games anymore. The second thing he did, he got help. He worked with someone who brought a structure and a process to help him look at what were some of his criteria. And you heard him mention he didn't want to wear a tie. He wanted to be involved with his community. And so from there, he said, well, what might be some options? I see and a lot he, of lists. He's making a lot of lists. And he lists made a here. lot of lists. Mm -hmm. He was just brainstorming and saying, mm -hmm. well, what might it be? Then he began exploring. Well, what were some of those options that he was thinking about exploring? Well, he talked about being a chaplain. He talked about being a professor. He knew that he wanted to be engaged with people in a way that would speak to him and let him give more than he had before. So what he did was he said, next. He stayed open to possibilities. And he stayed open to ideas that had never even made the list up here on his options. And then he said, when the man said, what about EMT? Yeah, when the battalion chief, happened, the battalion to in the chief neighborhood. happened to be in the neighborhood. So he stayed open. And then the next thing he did was he chose. And once he chose, it wasn't all that easy. He struggled. He said he got kicked out, and then he, he uh, flunked yeah, out. He, he quit twice. He quit twice. Because he didn't appreciate how hard it was to learn. He's had textbooks. That's right. And when was the last time he had to learn stuff from a textbook? And so he went back to when he had been successful as a student at the University of Minnesota. And he even wrote the university and had them send book covers and notebooks so that he could sort of call upon that sense of, I know how to do this. So he got creative. That was creative. Then he had to become a beginner. 
And for most of us at our stage in life, we are really good at a lot of things. And so we have to be willing to be a beginner in something else. So that was a key part of his finding his place. He is twice as old as the typical member of the, of the firehouse. Exactly. That's a fact. 